Hi, my name is Alexandre Pinto and this is the final project of the Big Data Analysis course on the Hover Extension School uh, pre that was uh, performed on Spring 2013. So the subject I chose was real-time processing re using Kafka and Storm. Uh, for some reason I thought that doing only one technology would not be enough so I decided to dabble with two of them which proved to have some very interesting results and I hope you enjoyed this as, uh, watching this video as much as I enjoyed putting it together for you. So the agenda is very simple and I'll have to keep it pretty brief. So first of all we'll get started on a motivation for this real-time streaming problem. I mean what do we even, why do we even bother? Why isn't Hadoop and all the things that we have been doing so far enough? Uh, we're going to be talking about Kafka and we're going to be talking about Storm, mainly about what they are, what kind of problem they're trying to solve. And uh, we'll have a brief demo dis discussion around uh, the technology and the code that I put together in order to demonstrate these two tools in action. So first of all, what's the motivation for real-time streaming? I mean, why, why do we even bother? So, I mean, it's a known fact, if you have been watching any class or doing any exercises from now, uh, that batch processing has been a stable of big data for almost 10 years now. I mean, the first, the first big table implementation that was heard of was in 2003. And uh, they have been doing, people have been doing very interesting applications with that. But uh, the fact is that the, the requirements, they have really, really evolved. Uh, people, they don't really like to wait for their answers. So if there's any way that we can have something going on that can give me a quicker computation or can give me uh, a quicker kind of response for what I need, uh, th that would certainly be preferable. So I, I list a few, of, a few requirements here and uh, the online machining, le machine learning one is speci specifically interesting because it reminds me of an anecdote uh, on the Super Bowl that just happened uh, where we had the power outage and uh, in less than five minutes, and as it started, the, the Twitter was already picking up uh, that the hashtag blackout was trending everywhere around the world. And uh, it, it suddenly became much, much more expensive to, to promote your tweet using this hashtag than it was before. So they used it to make money. And don't we all, right? This is exactly why we're putting all of this together. And uh, the thing is that uh, Real-time has different requirements, so there's no such thing as patching Hadoop or just changing it a bit. And we mainly want to be able to have scalable computing out of these, and most of all, uh, preventing data loss. I mean, uh, it's no good if we cannot rely on this team computation in some way, and uh, both of the toolkits that I want to present, they address this problem in different ways. So I guess the main point is how to make this relatively painless and be able to implement this in a way or another. So we start off by Kafka. And uh, Kafka was, uh, is a system that uh, is a messaging system. So it works on the publish-subscribe basis. So it means that uh, there's going to be a few actors that are going to be publishing messages to this uh, environment and there will be a, a number of consumer or subscribers that will be collecting messages from these uh, these environments so um, they allegedly are very very fast so they will persist the messaging queues as a traditional messaging queue would like a zero MQ or something like that they persisted on this very effectively with a very high throughput and uh, permits that these allows that these agents uh, can talk to each other through uh, specific topics or even specific partitions if you sp explicitly want to have uh, a specific uh, group of messages to be sent to this cluster of servers or to that cluster of services. Uh, a cool uh, thing about Kafka, which they LinkedIn makes a uh, yeah LinkedIn is the is who created this uh, environment and they have a couple of years ago they have open sourced it. It's what they run on, it's it's quite a modest use case and they really uh, bring forward that uh, the main reason they put this together is to be able to have a parallel online and offline computation. So they can load this data into Hadoop and they can also do online computation through a, a different number of systems that they, they have. Main different from other ones, it's it's more traditional uh, the, the structure, so it, it's it's similar to Flume, uh, it's similar to Scribe, which some other people are doing works on, but it's more like a messaging system. 
So, uh, how is it architectured? So, like I mentioned, you have the producers, which are the people who are generating the messages, and you have the consumers. And they are exchanging these messages. They are connected to, a, by being connected to a broker. And uh, they have this knowledge on which are the topics that are being uh, traded on. So, who sends information to, to each topic? Who's consuming information from each topic? And these brokers, as you can see there in the middle of the ZK, they are managed by a, a tool called Zookeeper, which is a clustering uh, management tool that's th that evolved with Hadoop as well. So the cool thing is that the messages are persistent and they can be queried from any point in the chain. So if I just instance a consumer right now and I look into a topic, I can decide if I want to look at the messages since the beginning of time pretty much or decide, no, I just want the last, I don't know, uh, two megabytes of data or something like that. So you, you got a lot of flexibility on where you start, which allows you to uh, understand if you have a very flexible implementation on how do you want to consume this data and use it for other purposes. So now Storm. Storm is uh, is a set of primitives, a set of, uh, it's a kind of a framework for doing real-time computation. So uh, they were made to be as simple. It was made to be as simple as possible. It was made to be very scalable. And what I think is the biggest takeaway: it has a guarantee of no data loss. So um, whenever a, an agent, they call them bolts, uh, receives a message and processes it, it sends back an acknowledgement to the node that sent. So the, the the node who sent it knows that okay, I don't have to send this data anymore. Because whomever it needed to get to, um, they acknowledged that they processed, processed this data and, and pushed it forward. And uh, this is also a recent framework. It was created by a company called Backtype, which was acquired by Twitter in 2011. Again, a modest use case. It's something that um, you know that, I mean, it has it, it been used in, in quite a massive, massive scale. Uh, so uh, the main architecture is, like I said, you have also have some agents and they're separated in what we call spouts which are the places where the data originates from and the bolts the bolts each one has executes a simple uh, task or, and uh, pushes it forward down down the the the, the line so uh, each each one of these these uh, bolts after they have uh, done whatever they needed to do they will emit uh, um, the the tuple or the key value pair or just the values that they, they want and they will push this forward. There's a lot of flexibility on which kind of data structures and how you organize them and there's also a lot of flexibility on how you consume them. If you want to do something that's like a map or something that's like a reduce, they made it very flexible and this is something that I talk with a, li a little bit more at length at my report because of the example that I, that I used to. So as I meant before, if you don't get the X, if the data doesn't get the X because a node failed, then the data is resent to a different node and the, the, the infrastructure, the, the framework keeps itself balanced and instantiates new nodes at, as it needs to. And uh, what can I say? When you put them both together, it's just awesome because you have the persistent data there, you have the persist persistent data from the messaging and you also have the guarantee that each piece of data is being processed on and you get an acknowledgement that uh, it has been done correctly. So anyway, let's put it together. Let's see what we can do with this thing. So I chose to implement what has now been known as the very, very complicated word count uh, in which instead of doing the same old thing that we did on assignment number six, we are, I'm using a producer to stream a text file through a topic, and then I have a sprout on a, on a storm framework, a computation framework that reads from this Kafka topic and computes the word count that's going through a series of bolts. So, like I said before, it's very cool because I can have multiple streams coming from Kafka. So I have my, I have my small uh, uh, Kafka producer. I could be logged in to another producer and typing data. I could have other parallel stuff sending data to this topic. And the bolts are there. They're performing the computation as the data comes through. So 
I don't have to worry to set the data and then send it over again. It's it's all there. It's just working. Uh, not so cool part. It actually took a lot of work to setting this up. So these are not uh, uh, frameworks to be trifled with. So one of them uses Scala. The other the other one uses Clojure in order to be to be compiled and to manage everything. Especially if you're integrating them both, they can be very very picky on which. Uh, which uh, versions talk to each other. So anyway, I did all this work so you guys don't have to. I hope you get to you get to read the report that goes into painstakingly detail on how to get this done. So like I mentioned, we have on one side the producer and uh, it's sending the data to a Kafka broker that is registered with the local zookeeper and basically it connects to it. It, it needs the producer as you can see on, on the code there then it just reads the text file that was passed to it and sends the 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 lines that were read through the text file to this to this broker there's a little bit of code that's hidden there which is the actual api uh, for but this can be easily seen on the on the uh, on the actual text file and it's not that interesting anyway it's it's quite it's quite simple to use and uh, and you'll be able to get a look at that anyway when you get to the consumer and processor, it's a little bit more interesting. So you have the data, you have each instantiating each bolt, and you can tell how each bolt is going to relate to the previous bolt. So I get my spout, which is the, the Kafka spout, as you, you, you'd assume, which uh, draws this, the, this information from the, the, the broker that I mentioned. So this guy is actually is a, it's a custom uh, project as well called Storm Kafka, which was a really, really tough cookie to compile, but it was definitely worth it. So I send the data from the Kafka spout to the split, which splits the sentence into tokens. That goes to the count. And notice there that the count has a field grouping by the word. So it, it will have a reduce-like behavior. So I, I don't have to do anything special on the boat to tell it it's going to be a reducer. But as I create the infrastructure, I just give it data so that it could be used as a reducer. And then the data that I get from the count, I, I push it through to a print that writes to the console and an output bolt that uh, saves it to an output directory with a file for each one of the, of the uh, processes that are, are running. Anyway, so here's a little bit of the demo. And uh, I'm actually not going to switch right now. I'm going to trust my future self to do a demo and to paste it correctly with a video editing software here. And I'm he's a great guy. I'm pretty sure he'll be able to manage it. Hi, this is future Alex here, and I'm going to run the quick demo for you. So first of all, these are all connected to the virtual machine. I want to start out the Zookeeper server. So don't mind the huge command line. This has been auto-generated for me from, uh, from Kafka. So I start the Zookeep server on. I want to start the broker, which is going to handle the messaging. And we also have the server started. And now, just to test the infrastructure out, I'm going to instantiate a console producer so I can just write stuff on the console to send it to the, to the environment. I'm going to use uh, our uh, class as the topic. And I'm going to write some things like, hello. Is it me you are looking for? And uh, these all got into the stream. And uh, if I instantiate a console consumer here, you'll see that I received those messages. And actually, I get a few more because I was playing around with this a little bit before. So anything I write here is being sent over. To my consumer so yeah it seems like it's up and running so let's do something a little bit more interesting now so I already have that channel set up I'm gonna move down a level here and uh, let's execute our word count uh, which is going to look listen at this at the topic and it's going to output its word counting stuff to the output uh, e1 8 5 folder so it's going to start up. And 
and uh, it's gonna do a lot of stuff and while it's start up I'm gonna set up the other window here and you can see it moving it's setting up the threads and it just executed the word count and uh, the Kafka uh, the Kafka thread is looking for more data as it comes over so if I do something similar give it a little work here I can just run my friend all Bible which is the same uh, text file we've been using for word count earlier and I'm gonna send it through my Kafka file streamer I'm gonna send it one time it's it's quite enough to the same topic and it takes a while to start up as well got a lot of jars to load da -da -da -da. and it's sending the stuff and it just sent and you can see that our friend on the right just got way way crazy because it's receiving all these words and it's processing it and it's sending through a lot of real-time streaming and through all these boats that we we described earlier if we look here at the output directory we can see that we have these files here which are being generated by each one of the processes um, that are constantly spitting out these uh, ongoing computations uh, of the word count and and that's pretty much it this is gonna take a while I don't want to bore you and um, I'm gonna uh, head back to our friend past me so that we can finish this okay I hope future me did a good job taking care of you guys and uh, I want to thank you all for this time and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please read the report. It was a word, it was a labor of love, really, to get this done. And uh, thank you very much.